From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening of evenings LA Late. Over this one hour broadcast, a special report in prime time. We'll go over your stocks, your bonds, and of course, of the breaking news tonight on your Fourth Stimulus Check update of 2022. As a horse in check is landed in every U.S. state, and I'm going to show you over this one hour broadcast how to get it as thousands and tens of thousands of viewers have gotten it from this channel. The incredible news tonight is that the Build Back Better Act is back on, baby, but the big shocks have already landed in your states. No time to wait for Build Back Better Act to get it passed. Those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state are a lot of money, upwards of $80,000 a stimulus check. That would give you enough money to potentially survive an entire year on just one check. But get ready, because there's more than just one for stimulus check in every U.S. state tonight. Over this one-hour broadcast, we're going to go over how to get those checks. It's a big night. We have a lot of breaking news. We started the day with the latest earnings reports from Walmart. The nation's biggest retailer out, and the numbers were weak. Missing price targets. All the latest details on that earnings report from Walmart, a major miss. Next. The housing starts and the housing sentiments down again. A new report released early today, and it was the worst number for housing sentiments among home builders that we've seen in over a decade. What does that mean for you? I have the latest details tonight in this one hour special broadcast. Next up, we turn to the Federal Reserve as Jay Powell spoke minutes ago. What did he say about inflation? What did he say about interest rates? It was a shocker. It's nothing I would expect him to say. Is it good or is it bad news? All the latest details on this breaking news just minutes ago. Jay Powell, your head of the Federal Reserve, speaking on inflation, and you're going to be shocked what he said. Next up, we look at the economic data that was released earlier today. And tomorrow, we have Target and Home Depot reporting corporate earnings. What does this mean for your money? We're going to have the details on that SS300, the details on Build Back Better Act, the latest developing details on student loan debt forgiveness, the money is available for you right now, and the other monies thereafter. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, good evening. Over this one-hour broadcast, we have a lot of money. It's Evenings LA, America's most watched show for financial news in prime time. And we're got everything except the bacon. <laughs> I mean, you know, we we're going so well until I looked on set and I noticed that there's no bacon. But that's what happens with recession. Supply chain disruption, yes. Other issues like bacon, we'll get to that as well. It's Evenings LA, and it all starts right now. And good evening. It's a big night across the board with big developing details as Walmart posted disappointing earnings that impacts your Build Back Better Act. The housing data that came out today, bad, that impacts your Build Back Better Act. And also, Jay Powell spoke minutes ago that also impacts your Build Back Better Act. With that, let's go over all the breaking details from Wall Street to Main Street with the big money that impacts your wallet starting right now. It was a big debaucherous day, and in fact, all the data that came in today was exactly as I had predicted. We started the day with the latest numbers that came out from Walmart. And Walmart, America's number one biggest retailer, had disappointing earnings for Q1. I had predicted that last night on Evening's LA in prime time when I said no less than two weeks ago, Amazon had much the same problem. What's at issue? In the case of Walmart, it was much the same, but a little bit more magnified. Walmart, reporting Q1 earnings for 2022 earlier today, announced that it was a major misses. Why? Higher fuel prices, higher inventory levels, and overstaffing caused because of COVID. In a call by analysts with the CEO after the call, CEO Doug McMillan of Walmart said, we were unexpected and reflected an unusual environment in which... They came out of lockdown, called more people back into work, and had too much staffers. Then they also had higher fuel costs for delivery of products. Supply chain disruption, 101. And then they also reported that a lot of the products did not get to the stores on time. Also supply chain disruption. Chief Financial Officer Brig Bet Briggs said that some of the merchandise were, learned, were arrived late 
And some items, like grills, were not there or not sold because of unseasonable cool weather in the United States. When looking at their earnings and when looking at their sales, their sales were significantly up compared to year to date. But when looking at their profit levels, the bottom line, it was a miss. Revenues was a beat, $141 billion compared to year to date, compared to what expected. And then earnings per share, miss, 130 versus 148 expected. This is part of the course of what we were talking about three weeks ago before the Wall Street crash when Amazon reported weaker earnings. Why is this happening and why is this big news for your Build Back Better Act? It's big news because when you look at the Build Back Better Act, we have a shortening economy, a tightening economy, a falling up economy, a struggling economy. And all those data points bear market falling crypto, falling stocks, fall, rising bond rates are all the, tied to the same issue stalling up economy. And in fact, when we heard the earnings report from Walmart today, what did he talk about? Stimulus checks. Just what I had said yesterday. I said yesterday when Amazon had reported corporate earnings for 2021, they reported the great ability to bring that check to the store for viewers, for Americans, and spend it on Amazon. And then I said when expecting Walmart earnings today, I said it's going to be different for Q1 2022 compared to Q1 2021, in which Americans had a big, lofty stimulus check and were spending in the stores. What did they say tonight on Walmart's corporate earnings? G given that stimulus checks happened last year, this is from Walmart, there was some benefit to those folks already eroding overtime and we looked at the rest of the year. So their takeaway was that Americans were spending that stimulus check last year going to the stores. This year, no inherent stimulus check in their hand yet, except for the viewership of the channel, because a forced stimulus check is in every U.S. state, but not a lot of people know about it except the members of this channel. And what does that mean? With less consumer spending than the economy shrinking, if the economy shrinks, then how much more can it shrink before going to recession? The latest data points continue throughout the day as... Housing starts were reported earlier today, or at least housing sentiments. This is what home buyers, home builders look at for their data points. And the re results were out from the home builders and the Wells Fargo Housing Market Index. It came in that sentiments fell at an outsized eight points to 69 in May compared to the National Association of Home Builders. This is the lowest reading of consumer sentiments among home builders since the start of the pandemic. Housing leads the business cycle and the housing is slowing, says NAHB Chairman Jeff Honker. And when looking at entry-level buyers hardest hit by rising rates, they're not buying because the mortgage rates are surging higher. 5%. It was only 329 last year. That's what NEN NAHB chief economist Robert Deitz said today. The housing market is facing growing struggles, challenging struggles. Building materials up 19% of year to date. And when we're looking at mortgage rates up 12-year high, very troubling across the board. Minutes ago, Jay Powell spoke. This is breaking news. You're hearing this for the first time on Evening's LA. It was just minutes ago, and I told you Jay Powell was speaking today. You're head of the Federal Reserve. What did he say about those interest rates and its impact on your wallet and what he's doing going forward? Well, this was a shocker because while I thought that Jay Powell was going to give you some of the repeated script, I'm trying to get to 2% inflation later this year, that we're trying to get to price stability, that we're not trying recession, we don't want recession, that we don't want to impact the, impact the labor market. He said all that, but then a surprise. What did Jay Powell say? He said, we're going to stay with these higher interest rate spikes until we get to price stability. Oh boy, folks, here we go. If that involves moving past broadly understood levels of neutral, we won't hesitate to do that. He said minutes ago in a conference with the Wall Street Journal, we will go until we feel we're at a place where we can say financial conditions are at an appropriate level and we see inflation coming down. We will get to that point. There won't be any hesitation about that. This is the first time we've seen any emphatic statement like that by Jay Powell. He did not mention the basis point, but he's clearly referring to half basis point. Basically saying for the first time ever on Evening's LA, this is breaking news, that Jay Powell will stay at this higher aggressive push to get down inflation rates until it works. But what's going to happen? It ain't going to work. And he's going to keep on hitting and hitting and hitting really hard until someone says, wait a second, you've been hitting this nail too hard. It ain't working. The breaking news tonight are shocking comments from Jay Powell that he's going to stay aggressive until it works. 
But what if it doesn't work? That question was not asked to Jay Powell in that Wall Street interview. Basically, the way Jay Powell's indication is that he's doing a half basis point, not just in May, not just in June, but until this works. And he won't let up until it works. Well, what happened if it doesn't work? That question was not asked, but I'm going to give you the answer. It ain't going to work, number one. And he's going to hit it so hard that it's not going to be a soft landing. It's going to be a hard landing. We're going to recession. And at that point, he'll say, I guess it didn't work. Or he's going to pick his choices, saying I have to keep on hitting really hard. You'll be in recession. You'll have imp impact on the labor market. And the situation will roll dramatically. You still can have a strong labor market if unemployment would go up a few ticks. But I would say that a few plausible passes have a soft landing, a softish landing. Our job isn't to handicap the odds. It's our job is to try to achieve that. Is it going to work? No. Basically, what Jay Powell is betting on is that the labor market will not be impacted by his raising of interest rates. This is a false bet. It's a bet that's not going to work. Why? Because what's going to happen is, is that the markets, the the industries, American corporations are going to suffer dramatically. Netflix already laying off today. And other companies announce, are going to announce layoffs and then going to have hiring freezes. And guess what happens? Labor then suffers more unemployment surges. Unemployment surges continue to grow. And then suddenly that prolonged lower employment level that we have right now will be gone. And Jay Powell will have defeated his purpose. He will have raised those interest rates and also given you back to those bad 2020 unemployment numbers. Yeah, that's the breaking news tonight, and I'm shocked that that's the quote I have to deliver to you. That basically, Jay Powell's saying, I'm staying really aggressively with, a, with these hard pushes, and I'm not going to let up until it works. The problem tonight, folks, is it's not going to work. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness that there's a four stimulus check in every USA, and it's coming up later in this recording. In this recording, we're going to go over those four stimulus checks that are in every, every state, and they're upwards of $80,000 of four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. You need it. Because of what Jay Powell says he's going to do, if he actually does it, you better get ready for the tsunami of not just a bear market, but the tsunami of a massive, massive recession. What Jay Powell is predicting is literally very, very scary. Let me put this in another context. You have a person who has said, I'm doing something, and now he's saying, I'm doubling down. I'm going to do it more aggressively than Ella even reported last night. Last night, I said, you know, two half basis points for June and July, and then he'll maybe ease up when he realizes that the supply chain disruptions was causing inflation. No, now he's saying, I'm not letting up at all. I'm going to hit it as hard as I can hit it until it comes down. Price and stability is not going to work in this economy. Is recession going to work? Is recession going to work with price and stability? What Jay Powell is not betting on is that you could have inflation and recession. That, my friends, is what's called stagflation. That's what he's going to be giving you. He's going to be giving you that because three developing details tonight, breaking news tonight, is that the three supply chain disruptions are getting worse. The first one is coming out of COVID in the United States. That coming out of COVID in the United States is getting worse because there is now major hotspots across the country of the subvariant of Omicron. In New York City, announcing that there's a recommendation to put max masks back on. Not a requirement, but at least a recommendation until the cases get more severe. Those hotspots across the country are growing dramatically. That will impact shipping and cargo and destination. This is supply chain disruption number one. Number two, supply chain disruption number two is Vladimir Putin invading Ukraine. When Putin invaded Ukraine, the supply chains of that whole area got disrupted. And that war is far from over. Insiders now say that it could go on several more weeks. It's not going to go on several more months, but it ain't going to be done this month. Number three is the supply chain disruption out of China. The breaking news tonight is that China is definitely coming out of lockdown in July. June, sorry. June, that's good news. That will give better price stability to goods that we make there and ship back or products that we buy there and put in our component parts here, like the Apple iPhone, as reported by Apple's corporate earnings two weeks ago. But get ready for supply chain disruption. Bad news. When China comes off that lockdown in just a few days, they are going back in their cars. And what are they doing? They're driving. One of the biggest consumers of gasoline internationally is China. And when they consume, there'll be more shortage of gasoline. And that more shortage of gasoline will drive up the price of gasoline at the pumps. And guess what this means for you and j -Pal? It just means j is going to do another half basis point increase. 
he's going to look at it and say, hey, yeah, it's just happened in China. This is what's happening in Vladimir Putin. This is what happened in the United States. I'm going to raise some more interest rates. Congratulations. Until people finally realize, wait a second, you keep on raising interest rates and none of this is you're doing is working. If you've been watching this channel for a few months, j Powell first dealt with this in January. You're now at month six. And despite all these moves by j Powell, nothing has worked. Nothing has worked. And all he has given you is higher interest rates, higher mortgage rates. Tonight, the 10-year Treasury note is higher, back above 2900. Yeah, I'll have more about that in a second. Higher flexible credit, higher credit card debt, higher flexible mortgage rates. It's a bad news, and he's going to make it worse by the day. Doubling down, absolutely doubling down. That was the latest details on that number, but then the retail sales numbers came in earlier today. Retail sales increased 0.9% April, boosted by increased demand. That's good, but the number was not adjusted for inflation, so you can't really take the number to the bank. Commerce Department reported this number early Tuesday, and it showed that Excluding auto sales, which increased at 0.6%, higher than estimates of 0.4%, the numbers were not adjusted for inflation. And these are not numbers that we have seen in 40 years when you consider inflation. What industries did really well in these retail sales numbers released overnight? The gross national growth, the GDP fell 1.4% in the first quarter, but most economists expect it to fall even more. I do as well. When you look at the data that actually rose, bars and hospitality had a light, had a nice pop, showed a 2% increase uh, when comparing it to the March numbers. And miscellaneous retail, which is buying lobster shorts, miscellaneous, and online sales, which is buying them, you know, in multiple colors online, that showed a light, a light pop of 2%. Overall, these numbers were not adjusted for inflation. So what you got to take away is they could be actually much worse. The 10-year Treasury note for the first time moved above 2.9% in several weeks. This is as the monetary policy of j Powell continues to be aggressive. And guess what? 2.9% also signals higher mortgage rates. This comes as Morgan Stanley says the bear market rally, bear markets will continue to be rallying across the board. And Fed heads or Fed governors across the country continue to speak day after day, hour after hour. The takeaway for you tonight is that a four stimulus check is in every U.S. state, but Congress is trying to give you additional, yes, additional checks on top of that. That is the Build Back Better Act. The Build Back Better Act is a congressional bill that is currently in the Senate passed by the House that would give you additional, yes, additional checks on top of those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. Three clusters and three add-ons. Let's take a look at them starting right now. There's fifteen dollars to $80,000 across this incredible Build Back Better Act. And in those add-ons are MSC checks proposed at $2,000 a first month, $1,000 thereafter for up to six months for $7,000. There are an add-on of $250 billion of free home health care for seniors and people on disabilities. There is an add-on of $25,000 for the purchase of your first home. In that first cost of the Build Back Better Act, there's hazard pay. One more year, the earned income tax credit. $4,000 of elder care, $3,600 for the CTC brought back another year, the nutrition check getting in there, $12,500 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle, and then home repairs getting in there as well. That is the first cluster. When we turn to the second cluster, paid leave. What is paid leave? You have to take off from work due to sickness or illness. Single individual, if you're a part of that household, yes, you can get all these incredible sums of money. It is $1,700 a week if you make $70,000 or more per year, four to six weeks per year. So that's a lot of money. It's about four to $6,000 that is paid leave in that second cluster. When you turn to the third cluster, you see a lot of the items that Bernie Sanders is excited about. Free and net for all checks, farmers checks, independent contractors checks, and then lots of checks for seniors like dental, vision, hearing, lowering the eligibility age of Medicare from, med from 65 to 55. And the Medicaid gap fix, providing a workaround plan that provide insurance to uninsured people in 12 Republican holdout states. That is the Build Back Better Act. So what is the status on the Build Back Better Act that would give you, again, additional checks on top of the four stimulus checks that are in every U.S. state? The latest status on the Build Back Better Act tonight is that they're trying to get it done and get you that check in your hand before you vote in the midterm elections. You don't vote on November. You vote three months ahead of time by mail-in ballot. So the negotiations are trying to wrap now so that they get the vote by Memorial Day weekend. 
negotiations between Manchin and even the president underway. But the war of words sort of problematic. Bernie Sanders calling it sabotage over the weekend. Sinema going after Manchin, Manchin going after Sinema, the president going after Bezos, Bezos going after uh, the president, and Elon going after the president as well. A lot of warring words across the board. Let me tell you what the totality of it and my analysis of the Build Back Better is right now. The president has to get it done. He knows he has to get it done. Midterm elections decided on the Build Back Better Act. Don't get it done. The Democrats are gone. So I think it will get done. What version, I don't know. Number two, I'm a little worried about the Sinema Mansion situation because she is against touching corporate taxes to pay for Build Back Better Act. How else are you going to pay for it? That's the way Manchin wants to pay for it and all the rest of the Democrats. So they need to find a solution for this. I think this is what Joe Biden is best at. He's really good at getting Chris Sinema back on board. The last part of the equation that's very interesting is the voting date. They want to call this for a vote before Memorial Day weekend. But they got to get the negotiations wrapped up across the board right now, right today, right this moment. And when you talk about Build Back Better Act, what's important to understand is that you need to refocus this U.S. economy back on it. Comments by Bezos, comments by Elon in the last 24 hours were the following. Bezos slammed Build Back Better Act. Then, 24 hours later, Elon Musk slammed the president. What are they complaining about? Well, let's be very frank. Both of these two individuals were the target of the president of the United States. Joe Biden went after both of them, personally or corporate-wise, in the last year. He first went after both of them by saying they were not paying enough for their for their corporate taxes for their businesses, whether it was Musk for Tesla or whether it was Amazon and Bezos. Then the president of the United States fully admitted that he went after and tried to support the unionization of Amazon workers. So there's a lot of tensions that is bigger than just Build Back Better Act. When we talk about Elon, What's at issue is that Elon is very upset about Build Back Better Act. I've been talking about that since day one because that $12,500 for the purchase of a new electric vehicle is not a Tesla. That is only a car made by Ford or GM in a unionized plant. And that is basically an anti-Tesla provision in the Build Back Better Act. So there's a lot of reasons why a, a Musk or a, a or, or Bezos speak against uh, Build Back Better Act. It's not because of you. It's because of their companies and their bottom line. Ultimately, I focus on you, not I don't focus. I don't focus on corporate America and what their pretty penny looks like. Bernie Sanders called it sabotage over the weekend. I don't. I think that's a little bit dramatic, but I like when Bernie Sanders talks the talk about Bill Bat Better Act because it gets us refocused back on it. When you talk about the the Fed Chair Jay Powell. He is one of multiple Fed governors that are speaking this week. Of course, he is the pres the, the, the Fed chairman, but their talk is getting inflation down to 2% later this year. How does that impact your SS benefits? How does it impact your veterans' benefits? Let's go over all the details starting right now. President of the United States, when running for the president, and then in his presidential platform at JoeBiden.com, said that he's going to swap COLA for inflation. Swapping COLA for inflation is great news for you because it would give you a lot more money. How much more money? I calculated about $3,600 more per year. How does this work? By swapping COLA for inflation, you get a better benchmark. Every December, your benefits are determined based upon a benchmark. If that benchmark is up, then the number, then your benefits go up. Last December, the benchmark, of course, was COLA, a bad benchmark, and it came in at 5%. Had it been inflation, which Joe Biden promised, you would have gone up 8%. 8% is $200 more per month. And not just that month, not just that year, but lifetime. If inflation tracks at 4% later this year, as I'm projecting it will, you go up another $100. That would be SS300. The fact that Joe did not make that swap back in December has now cost you six months of $300. Yeah, that's a pretty penny. But if you made the swap today, well, in one year, you would get $3,600 more per month. Per year, that's $300 over 12 months. What does this involve? Step one, picking up the phone and contacting the Social Security Administration head, saying swap COLA for inflation. Step two, there is no step two. That's all it requires. One simple phone call. And that is why I've been telling you to take these videos and tag the president. Hashtag L8, hashtag Purple Power. Advocate with the hashtag Joe Make the Call. This one's a no-brainer, folks. This does not need an act of Congress. Does not need a vote, does not need a Republican, does not need a Democrat, does not need Congress. It just needs a phone call. 
And in the, all the collective comments from Bezos, from Musk, from the president, from, from uh, Jay Powell, and from myself, they've all said the same thing in the last two weeks. The people hurt most by inflation are the lowest earners, lowest income, and the largest beneficiaries of the beneficiary system. If you're on SSI or SSDI, veterans benefits, you're hurting from inflation. If you're a low-income family that makes less than 75000 a single individual, you're hurting. Make 150000 less, you're hurting more. You get hurt more by inflation than anyone else. Because why? Your benefits don't go up yet when inflation goes up. Your check as an employee does not go up when your benefit when inflation goes up. And that is why people now in that new retail sales number that was released today, basically, a coin analyst said they dipped into their savings to spend the money. It's not like the retail sales number went up because people had a lot more money. The analyst said that people are now dipping in their spent in their savings to get those to get those items bought in the stores. Now, when you're talking about Build Back Better Act, when you're talking about SS300, it's all good for the economy. Why? Recession involves a contracting economy. When the gross national product of the U.S. economy goes down, when, when businesses make less money, when spending is curbed, well, how do you change that? You give people money to spend. Pretty obvious. The federal government giving you money to spend does not cause inflation because the federal deficit has nothing to do with inflation. The federal government giving you money to spend is good for the, gov for the country because it prevents a recession. When people spend money at an Amazon, it reports a higher corporate earnings. When people spend money at a Walmart, it would have reported a higher corporate earnings for Q1 this last morning today. That is why Build Back Better Act helps this economy. That is why SS300 helps this economy. That's why it helps you dramatically. But if there's something I know more than anyone else, anywhere else, in the face of broadcast media today, is how to help you. How to help you is to get you money. And when things are tight, when things are unclear, when things are stalling up, I step up. And that is what I've done since day one. I did this in the thick of the pandemic in 2020. When we saw those negotiations between Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin going nowhere for second stimulus, I said, you need money. It was the thick of the pandemic. It was December 2020. And I got you money when there was very little around for rent and utilities. Well, what happened in March of this year? In March of this year, I saw that the Build Back Better Act still didn't have a date, that you were hurting, you needed money, you needed stimulus, and I looked high and low. Hours of research go into every recording, and I found it. Buried in press releases from the White House was a series of executive orders which announced new stimulus checks, four stimulus checks, not covered in broadcast media, not covered in print media. They'll never cover it because they don't care about you like I do. And I found them, and they have been law, and they have been on this channel since the moment they were announced quietly, smallly, by the White House. Yes, March 31st, check A, a forced stimulus check announced by the White House. March 4th, a forced stimulus check announced by the White House, 15,000, 80,000, and check C, law since early 2021. In the second half of this video, we're going to go over these forced stimulus checks in every U.S. state. What do you do? Step one is you subscribe to this channel. Step two is you go to the top of this channel and hit the join button. Join this channel by becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Casino VIP. Then getting that incredible newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system. And in the second half of this video, we'll be going over each of these incredible checks one at a time. They are a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. And I'll go over why these checks are so big. Why you're only hearing about these checks really in the number one most watched show for financial news in prime time, LL8. And why you and the members of this channel have done such incredible great jobs in getting these forced stimulus checks in every U.S. state. We'll go over all that after the commercial break. Become a member. But first, here's a little bit about the members community page as Evenings LL8 continues. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. 
their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals. Reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement continues right now. Now on a big second half of Indians LA for May 17th, 2020, 2022. Hope you're having a beautiful night. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, God bless. And thank you for joining me on America's Most Watched Show for Financial News in prime time. It's going to be a big week. Let me give you a preview of what's coming up for the rest of this week. Well, tomorrow on Wednesday, we will get quarter earnings reports from Target coming on in, along with Lowe's and also Burberry. We will get the housing starts number. Here we go. Wednesday morning, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I will feature on prime t- in, uh, on evening, on morning's LA live on air. On Thursday, we get corporate earnings in from Ross Stores and Eagle Products. But then we get existing home sale numbers at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on that big morning. The great news across the board is that a forcible check is landing in every U.S. state. And let's understand how this check got there. By Joe Biden. Executive action. Joe Biden certainly saw the situation how I saw it. Congress wasn't getting this done by Build Back Better Act. Americans needed checks. So what he did is did it by executive action. Repeat what I said before the commercial break. You're not going to see this in print media. You're not going to see this in broadcast news. You're not going to see this on another YouTube channel. You're not going to see this anywhere else because this is the result of hours of research every single day, every single week on this channel. Hours and hours of research that I go in to find you checks, as I've been doing since day one, getting people on average, getting people across this channel over the last two years, $50 million. No one is more dedicated to getting you checks, finding you checks when they're hard to find them and need on a high stack. In this case, these are big checks. Let's go over these four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. First, let's remember the broad of what we're talking about, the broad scope. These four stimulus checks are in every U.S. state. They are very different than sh- the checks of 2020-21, but they're very, very similar to the, t- first, to the first stimulus checks of 2020. I'll be going over the comparisons in just a second. Let's go over how you get those incredible checks, and let's start with what each check is. First, check A is a four stimulus check in every U.S. state. It is a $6,500 to $12 thousand dollar for stimulus check you heard me right when was the last time you got a force got a stimulus check of twelve thousand dollars probably never let's go over these incredible details of how you get this check sixty five hundred dollars to twelve thousand dollars it's a four stimulus check it is available for anyone who makes seventy five thousand or less single individual married couple one hundred fifty thousand or less and if you're on benefits and qualify it's called the homeowners weatherizing grant check how do you get it very simple Step one, subscribe to this channel. Step two, go to the top of the channel and join this channel. Become a member. Get that incredible membership signed up. Purple Power, Purple Hawk, or Calcino VIP. Step three, open that membership newsletter delivered via me to you via the YouTube alert system, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Go into that incredible newsletter and go down to check A. It gives you details about check A, what it's about, and the link. Yes, in the case of Check A, you are going right into a website to apply. Very simple, all in the membership newsletter. Go get it. Check B, a four-stimulus check in every U.S. state, and boy, you're not seeing a typo. It is a $15,000 to $80,000 four-stimulus check. When was the last time you got a stimulus check of $80,000? Well, viewers of this channel are getting it, and that is the difference of what I do here versus anywhere else. I'm not here for $600, $700, $400 checks. I'm here for monster checks. 
And that's what I found with you with check B. It is a forcible check in every U.S. state. 75,000 or less, single individual. Married couple, 150,000 or less. And yes, if you're on SSI, SSDI, veterans benefits, uh, RB, you can get it as viewers have. How do you get check B? Just almost like check A. Step one, you go into that membership newsletter. Step two, you go down to check B. And at check B, it gives you details about it and then a link. You go into the link, into the website, and apply. So simple, go get check B. Check C is also a force symbol check in every U.S. state. It's different than check A and B in some regards, but in other regards, it's a lot more money. How do you get check C? Step one, you go into the membership newsletter. Then step two, you go down to check C, and it describes how to get it. It is reaching out for rent, utilities, mortgage assistance, and more with a series of 15 plus places, and they're all in the newsletter. The newsletter tells you where to reach out to, who to reach out to, and what to say. Your city, your state, your county, your nonprofits, and more, all in that incredible newsletter. The viewership of this channel have been getting this Check C since 2020. It's had a lot of different names on this channel. It's now called Check C. It was once called Purple. Then it was called Third Simus because it's really Third Simus money. Now it's called Check C. And viewers have cleaned up on that Check C across the board. If you're on the live chat and you've had success on any of these checks, post your success story, whether it was then, now, or at the same time. Here are success stories from Check C. 27000 for rent. Here are success stories for Check C. Look at that. Mark's brother-in-law got $15,000 for that utilities. Here's Nisi, success story for Check C. She had 23000 in November. This is a November graphic of last year. She has gone back and gotten about $8,000 five more times. So, yeah, she's upwards of about forty to 50000 And let's look at the success story for Check C. Viewers understand who are longtime viewers, you don't apply once. You keep on applying. And you don't just get one check. You keep on getting more checks. Mark, he was at 30000 Then he went to 50000 Then he went to 100000 Now he's at one sixty six. Because he got check B as well. Here's Lorraine. She was at 105. Now she's at 120. Go get it. Again, how do you get these incredible four stimulus checks? Step one, go to the top of the chat or under the video. Step one, and subscribe. Step two, hit that membership link. Join the channel. Step three, there's a little bell at the front of this channel. A little bell. Make sure you hit it and make sure it's set to all notifications. And then get that membership newsletter. It's Monday through Friday, 7 p.m., which is West Coast time, Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Friday. And it arrives in your way in which you receive your notifications. The title of the notification is New LA Post. And you see the first line says LA Newsletter, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You click it, you go right into that membership newsletter, and you go right down, apply for A, apply for B, apply for C on the phone, and you're ready to rock and roll. But I got more money for you. Yeah, I told you I'm not done with you yet. I got more money for you, and it's check D. Check D is in some U.S. states. How many? About 24, but I think it's going to grow to about 40. It is not in every U.S. state, but it's in most of them. And where is that check D details are? Where are those check D details are located? That's a tongue twister. In the membership newsletter. You go right in that membership newsletter, go down to check D. And it'll tell you how much New Jersey is paying for a stimulus check. How much different states are paying for first for a forced to most check, and how you get it? It's all in that incredible newsletter. You go right down in there. Twenty four states likely to grow. Forty states. There you go. Check A, B, and C, and D. In some states, go get it. Do not wait. Let's go over to student loan debt forgiveness, which is not a check, but it's a big financial win for all. Chef John Meyer is a longtime viewer of this channel. He got his student loan debt forgiven. Other viewers as well. If you've had a success story, send it me on private message, like Facebook or Instagram, and I'll feature it live on air. Let's go over the details of what the president has done on this front. The president has forgiven a lot of student loan debts, but he has still a big one left to deal with. The student loan debt forgiveness has involved, first, the forgiveness of debts for individuals who became disabled after graduation, then went to work in the nonprofit or public sector, then people whose debts were procured by fraud by the university against them, forgiven. And if your debts were in default, they've been put into good standing. Meantime, the president of the United States has signaled he will not do $50,000 of student loan debt, but many believe he will do 
$10,000 of student loan debt forgiveness. If he did $10,000 of student loan debt forgiveness, what would happen then? That would wipe out $321 billion of student loan debts across the country, and it would wipe out a $10,000 average per borrower or 12 million people alleviated of all their concerns across the board. If you watch social media, if you're on Twitter, you would have seen what happened when the head of SNAP and his wife announced yesterday that they are paying off all the student loan debts for for graduating students from one Los Angeles university. The reaction on the faces of those students was heartwarming. Financial student loan debt when forgiven is a biggie. And to learn more about it, what do you do? I want you to go to the Department of Education's website, go under the press releases, and look and read all of them for the last three months. Miguel Cardona, who's Education Secretary, is doing a lot of great stuff, but it's a little complicated for a particular video. I want you to write down the following words. IDR loan, or IDR credit, then public service loan forgiveness, and also the income-based repayment programs. Let me tell you basically what Cardona is doing with Biden. They're changing the language of the statute so that more of the debt can be forgiven and without requiring an executive action. Now, will the president forgive $10,000 on top of that? I think he will. When will that announcement happen? I think it's going to happen a little bit further out. That SS300 is the one that needs to happen right away. Joe needs to make that phone call. So share this video on social media. Tag the president at POTUS and Joe Biden. Tag your elected officials and, hash and especially Liz Warren with hashtag Joe make the call. Share this video. Hashtag L8. Hashtag Purple Power. Hashtag Joe make the call. Because that would be money right away to you folks. Right away, if you're on SSI, SSDI, veterans benefits and more. $200 a month right now, and then another $100 by the end of the year, if I have inflation tracking correctly, at 4%. We started today with those housing numbers and the housing builders showing down numbers. These were not good numbers. We had started the day with Walmart missing on the, earn on the earnings front. Tomorrow we have Target. Tomorrow we have Home Depot. Do I believe the same thing? I believe it's going to be the same thing. We've been seeing this as Amazon three weeks ago. It's the supply chain disruption. It's really hurting the numbers. And the good news is that the retail sales showed that people want to spend the money, but it may not be their money because the analyst reports now say it's being spurred by people dipping into savings. That's why that retail sales number was a little bit stronger today, but it was not inflation adjusted. I mean, we do not know if that number was poor or weak based upon inflation. Of course, the number was just spurred by bar and reach restaurant sales, which were up 19.8% compared to the year before. Well, of course, no one was going to a bar here before because the bars were closed because of COVID. But the Walmart earnings is not the only miss across the board. You know, in a week in which we've seen Under Armour and we've seen Facebook really getting hit, and we've seen the tech blading far from over. I believe that to continue throughout the day. We had the Nasdaq and the Dow relatively up, you know, 1% for the day, not substantial. When we're looking at the price of gasoline, trending still at that 112 Brent crude international level. Why is that important? When China comes off that lockdown in early June, get ready for the price of gasoline domestically to surge astronomically. I'm predicting that when China comes off a lockdown, which is about two weeks from now, the price of Brent crude will be not 112, but 120. Yeah. The AAA national average for gasoline in the United States is traveling is hovering a little bit higher tonight. It's been going from about 414 to 420 to 430. I believe it'll stay a sustained above 445 when China comes off a lockdown because they're gonna go back in their cars, they're gonna start driving. We're gonna see those initial new jobless claim numbers on Thursday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time after we have the building per and housing start numbers on Wednesday. And of course, we're gonna see those, um, we're gonna see the manufacturing numbers on Thursday as well. It's been a week like any other, but here's what you need to know is that I appreciate all those incredible kind comments I'm getting from people who says, thank you, Ally. I've gotten check A, I've gotten check B, or I've gotten check C. If you're one of the success stories, post in the live chat. If you haven't sent me a success story, send it me on Facebook on private message. Meantime, if you ever have a problem finding the newsletter or have any questions about it, send me a private message on Facebook. If you're on the live chat and you're a member, you know how to work, then how it works, then I am here to help you. Meantime, we also have instructional videos on the channel that explains how to open the membership newsletter, how to go in and get that money. The great news is that Americans on this channel have learned the importance of information.
Financial stability comes from knowing things before someone else. And that's what I tell viewers on day one of this channel. You can't compare yourself to someone else because that someone else is not very informed. I always have someone says, why have I not heard from, why has I not seen, why have I not, do you want to be the same as everyone else? If you were the same as everyone else, then you would have the same position in the stock as everyone else and the same position in the bond as someone else. Wouldn't you like to have the position in the stock where you make more money than someone else? Wouldn't you like to have the position in the economy where you make more money than someone else? You want to have information that's better than someone else's information. You want to have the best information available. So never compare yourself to the inferiority of someone else's information. That other person doesn't know about this. This other person doesn't talk about it. This other person doesn't think about it. Good. Why are you focusing on something that is uninformed when you need to be more informed than someone else? Big financial success in American economies have come from people who have known about things financially before other people. Well, that's my job on this channel, is to tell you what I can tell you far in advance. And I've been doing this since day one. Last year, I told you when those 100,000 Russian troops were at the Ukrainian border before Halloween, get ready. This is the biggest economic story of 2022. Then, when China went on a lockdown, I said, this is the biggest economic story of 2022. Thereafter, I said, when talking about inflation, in spring and summer of last year, we're going to 8% by December. People thought I was crazy. I said, it's going to be sustained 8% inflation. In fact, I said, by February, it's going up in March or April. It did go up. And guess where we are tonight? It's still 8% inflation. Guess what happened? j Paul had it very wrong then, had it very wrong this spring. And tonight, he's saying he's going to hit it with half basis point or implying that he's going to hit it with half basis point consistently, nonstop, until price stability comes down. Well, I'm telling you right now that he's not going to get price stability down. He will get inflation down a little bit, but not anything significant. This 2% inflation is ridiculous every time I run the quote. To say that he's going to go get you down from 8% in May down to 2% by December is ridiculous. When he's had six months to do this and he hasn't gotten it moving out of 8%. Why is this important for you? Because the next two years are going to be very bad. If you never lived through a recession, you never lived through stagflation, you've never seen this before, you're going to feel it really dramatically. And that is why with a wad of cash, not $600, not $1,200, not $400, not $200, a massive wad of cash of four stimulus checks in every U.S. state in front of you, you got to grab them and then go back and grab another one and then grab another one. And then when you get to check C, you got to get every check and check C multiple times. You got to reach out to the nonprofit and get the rent, then reach out to the city and get the rent, then reach out to the county and get the rent. You got to get the utility, the water bill from the water company, and then go reach out to the nonprofit and get the water bill again. You got to keep on getting checks like Nisi does. You can't sit around and say, when is that check D landing? Check D is a few hundred dollars. A few hundred dollars ain't going to pay your bills more than a month. Look at these big checks for check C and B and A. They can cover you for the rest of this year or maybe for two years if you get a lot more of them. And when you do that, then you're creating financial stability for you as I'm projecting, as I'm predicting financial instability for this economy starting next year. That's how we do it as a family. In the last 24 hours, I've had a couple of private messages come in from people saying, I'm facing eviction. And I always wonder when I get those questions, is this someone that just found this channel or is this someone that's been a longtime viewer? I hope it's someone that just found this channel. I'm trying to save them at the 11th hour. I really hope. I hope it's not a longtime viewer because I've been covering rent assistance on this channel since December, November 2020. And if you waited all this time to never get rent assistance after all these videos over two years, then it causes me a concern. Ultimately, I don't know if these are new viewers or old standing viewers. But my message to you is what I want you to do is get every check even if your situation is financially stable at the moment, this instability of this economy is coming. The horizon out there is troubling. And as a family, we do it all together. We support one another. We fight for one another. And we cheer on one another. We don't apply for checks for one another. But we support one another's successes. So if you've had success during the live chat, post it right now. And get these checks. Open that membership newsletter tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and pounce because you're a purple hawk 
you're a purple power, and tag Joe Biden, hashtag Joe make the call, because that, that SS swap needs to be done. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, good evening and have a beautiful night. Coming up throughout the night is evenings LA at 5 o'clock, then evenings countdown at 6, stream stimulus at 7, evenings extra at 8, and sunset at 9. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with LA for more.